Okay, let's get started. So this is basically going to be uh, a re-upload of the first video I did a couple weeks ago, which went over claw simulation between Marvelous Designer and Maya. Um, so it's the exact same video. I'm only remaking it because the first time I did it, the recording software didn't record all of the pop-up windows and settings that I was going over. Um, so they just didn't show up in the recording. So I'm making this video again just to show all, just to show all of that and show you guys um, each of the steps, what, what settings you need and all of that. So um, same information. Hopefully it'll be a little bit more concise. And uh, yeah, so this is going to be how to simulate cloth um, efficiently between Maya and Marvelous Designer for production. So let's get right into it. So here we are in Maya. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set a project. So go to File, Set Project. I'm going to click on your uh, project folder. And then you're going to open up your scene. Let's open that. Um, don't say continue. And you can see here that I just have um, a rig that I found online with some animation I've added a walk cycle to this guy so um, make sure so that's important so just um, set up your Maya scene bring in your animation and we're gonna do some some quick uh, fixes here to kind of get this set up ready to bring it to marvelous so the first thing that we're gonna do is you need to set your scale okay you need to make sure that the scale in Maya is the same working with Marvel's designer okay so whatever this unit is you're, you can change this to something else um, it can be anything that you want, but you need to make sure that one, you're working with real world scale and that the scale you're working with is the same between Marvelous Designer and Maya. So it can read um, units, essentially it can read units the same. Um, so make sure that that's set. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to be working with centimeters, okay? So hit save. Um, and then the next thing you need, you need to do is set the scale of your rig, okay? So it's not enough to set the scale of um, your software. You need to basically set whatever you're working with to be real world scale. Um, so I'm kind of just going in here. I, I, I'm assuming that this character is going to be about six feet tall. So that, that should be okay. Um, you may need to go and do some math on w whatever you're working with. Just try to figure out as best you can what the scale of what you're working with actually is. So we've set our scale, right? So pretty easy so far. And the next thing we need to do um, is we need to add a neutral pose to this animation. Okay. So when you're working with Marvelous Designer, you usually need to be, you're going to usually be creating clothing, okay? You're not always going to be simulating it, but in order to simulate clothing, you need to create it, right? So what we need to do essentially is get this character into a neutral pose, something, and a pose that's uh, symmetrical so that we can create clothing on it, right? Because um, if you have a, let's say that we brought this into Marvelous Designer and try to create clothing on this, right? It would be a huge headache because you have this hand in front close to the leg, right? And it would be super hard to get you know, maybe some pants working around the legs here. So the thing we want to do is create a neutral pose that's easy to work with so that we can create our garment very easily and then we can go straight into simulation, all right? So what we need to do is basically create an A pose for this character. So I'm going to select all of these controls. I'm going to open up Windows and Animation Editors, Graph Editor. I'm going to select all of this animation. I'm just going to bring it over to frame 24. So I'm going to bring it over one second. Looks good, okay. And now going back to frame zero, select all of your controls and make sure that the translate and the rotate set to zero, okay? And then if you have um, auto keyframe on, it'll automatically add you a keyframe. If not, you would have to go in and key all of your controls. Um, I think we're good in this case, yeah, okay. So the nice thing here is that if we play this now, you get the A pose and then you get a nice transition into the animation. So what this does as well is not only gives you a, a neutral pose to create clothing on, but it also allows um, a little bit of time in the animation for the clothing to settle before your character starts to actually um, act or your clothing starts to simulate. So it's just a little bit more um, realistic and easier way to get your clothing kind of uh, settled on your character before they start moving around. All right, so we've done that. The next thing we need to do is we need to um, bake out this animation. So I'm going to hide these controls up here and I'm going to, I had my geometry on reference. So we're going to unreference that. And then I'm also going to delete these things here, the knee pads and such. Um, just for the sake of this tutorial, we really don't need to worry about it. Um, an Alima, we're going to be using an Alima cache and with an Alima cache, you can export um, multiple um, objects at once. So that wouldn't be a concern, but just for the sake of simplicity, we're going to get rid of those. So we have our A pose, we have our transition into the walk cycle, and we have our animation. Now we're going to bake it out. So go up here to cache, 
Aline McCash. If this is not here, um, I think now in Mayan 2019 and Mayan 2020, it should be installed by default, but you can always go into Plugin Manager, and I think it's just, um, I think it's this one actually, ABC Export. So if that is um, not loaded, just load that, and then it'll open up, it'll it'll show in the, the cache. So Aline McCash, um, select this guy first. Aline McCash, Export Selection to Olympic. Make sure that you have this setting. Let me open up this window a little bit more. Um, make sure that this is uh, set to time slider. Okay. Step is one. That should be okay. And I'm going to set this to in the cache 02. Uh, I'm going to export selection. It's going to bake it out, do its thing. And as soon as that's done, um, you're basically ready to hop into Marvelous Designer. So, so we're going to hop into Marvelous Designer and we're going to get straight into simulation. All right, so we've hopped into Marvelous Designer, and the first thing we need to do is import our cache. So go to Import, Alembic. Let's open that up, make sure, again, centimeters, 24 frames, hit OK. It's gonna do its thing, and it's gonna bring in the geometry. Cool. So at this point, you would need to create your garment. Um, I'm not gonna go over that in this video. This video is more focused on simulation, so, um, Feel free to look up tutorials on that and everything, but um, this would be the point where you create your garment before you start uh, simulating. So once you've created your garment, you're basically ready to simulate your animation. Um, there's some things you want to keep in mind before you go into there. You'll probably end up coming back into the garment creation tab, the, this tab right here, and kind of editing it before you go and, and uh, simulate it again. So it's kind of a back and forth process, but here are a couple things that, you know, it helped me um, when I was working on mine. So. The first thing is um, tacking on uh, avatar. So depending on how tight, tightly fitting your clothing is to your character or whatever, um, you may need to tack um, some points on your avatar so the clothing doesn't move around too much. Because uh, when I simulated this guy, um, these uh, kind of pieces of fabric would just fall off the shoulders. So I need to kind of tack these up here. So you would just go up here to tack on avatar. And then uh, I already put some here, but you can see you would tack the clothing first and then where you would want it to kind of pin to on the avatar. So um, so just keep that in mind. I've done that with the shoulders up here and this kind of waist area too. So uh, once that's good, and you, again, you'll probably kind of be coming back and forth between this thing, but uh, once that's good, you're basically ready to go and uh, uh, do the final simulation of your, your animation. So you're going to go in here. And uh, this is pretty straightforward actually. So because we have our character in a pose, uh, he's already ready to go, and I have this already simulated. I'm going to just delete it for the sake of showing you how it kind of works. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, uh, basically just going to simulate this. So if you just press this record button, make sure that the this white bar up here is set to the same um, length as the uh, animation, the limit cache, right? Because if you set it for too long, it'll still simulate after the animation stops, and we don't want that. So make sure that that ends there. Make sure this is set to real time and that um, this repeat is checked. And so once that's ready, you basically just hit the record button and it's gonna start to um, do its thing. Uh, depending on your uh, machine, it may go a little bit faster or slower than this, but um, uh, just be aware of particle distance. So if you want very, very realistic clothing, obviously you gotta decrease that a lot, but it's also gonna add to um, the, the, the time of it takes to, to simulate. So. Um, it's just kind of a give and take experiment with that, mess around with it, and uh, we'll let this do its thing. And as soon as it's done, uh, uh, we'll look at it and then we're going to export it back into Maya and just clean it up real quick. Okay, so our animation is done simulating, and if we play this back, we hit this, uh, we can see our simulation. and. This is looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. So at this point, we're almost ready to go back into Maya. There's one thing we're going to do first, and that's going to check our UVs. Um, so this is kind of uh, redundant because uh, when you're working with Marvelous Designer, you're creating, you know, 2D surfaces. Um, so UVs are actually extremely simple in Marvelous Designer, but I usually just like to go in here to the UV editor and make sure that these are in uh, one UDIM. So um, it just makes it easier to apply textures and everything because by default, it's going to take up more than the, well, usually I'll say, depending on the size of your garment, it'll take up more space um, and kind of go outside of Udemy here. So if you exported that into Maya or something, you would have to manually go into the UV editor and 
scale those so it's just easier to do them here. So you just select all these and move them around um, into you know one unit or more. In this case, it's fine. So we're gonna go back into uh, animation, go to file, export, and uh, alembic. Make sure it's uh, HDF5. Um, this is uh, an alembic cache that is out of date in Maya, so it won't. You'll have a lot of issues if you export this one into Maya. So we're gonna use this one. So just click that. Um, do animation cache rename rename that to clothing cache. Go over here, zero one. Hit save. And then do thick unify UV coordinates, twenty four centimeters. That's uh, important. And then you should be okay. So just hit okay. It's going to export your um, class simulation into an alembic cache and when that's done you're ready to hop back into maya and you're essentially done we just need to kind of clean up a couple things and then we'll be ready to render cool so here we are in maya once again and all we need to do now is just go to cache alembic cache we're going to import alembic and then we're going to click clothing cache should be okay we're going to import that and then if we play this back we'll start to see that we have our cache um, imported so looking good um, just some cleanup things really, really quick. Um, you see how the normals here are really kind of funky. Um, I'm not really sure why that happens, but in order to fix that, you're just going to go here, click on your, your geometry and go to, we're going to go to the modeling tab, mesh display, and you're going to set that to face. And it's going to kind of just clean this up for you. And then you can uh, select it again and soften edge, get the nice soft edge on there. And then um, at this point, your cache is ready to be uh, uh, basically textured. You already have your, sorry about that. You already have your UVs uh, set up. We did that in the Marvelous Designer. So UVs are set up. You would have to just texture this, and then um, you'd be ready to render. So uh, a couple things. This is really easy. This is way more efficient than working with actual geometry. Like um, working in EnCloth or something like that would take way, way too long and a lot of render time. Um, the benefit of using a lean cache and this kind of workflow is that playback is very, very quick. Right? You have uh, relatively very fast playback for being um, such a dense cloth, right? And then render times as well, you know, basically the same as any other kind of piece of geometry. You don't have, you know, exponential render times because you have any simulation going on. Uh, Lima Cache allows for just kind of uh, very easy to render and makes it very efficient. So that's essentially it. At this point, you go in and render it and uh, get a nice uh, look to it. Um, so yeah, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was uh, better than the first video. I'm sorry about all of the complications, not having any of the preferences set up or anything, but um, this is basically the workflow between Marvel's Desire and Maya that I kind of figure out. Um, I think it's, um, you know, I think it works really well. It's efficient. It's been working for me really, uh, really nicely. So I hope it works for you too. You know, let me know what you guys think, if you have any recommendations for future videos or anything. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time.